Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Cindy Daychuk with Queen Bee Creations. Thank you for tuning in today. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do that. Keep us coming at you. We typically do two videos a week, if not more. Um, and today is all about these babies. So I just picked these up um, and they're gonna be super fun to be able to do like a really old world aged kind of look on them. They're very old and tired looking right now with just kind of that, that off old white and some gold showing through. So we're gonna make them kind of look like stone, a lot of weathered stone, but it means we're gonna be doing a lot of layers with them. So for this, because there's a lot of detail to them, I'm just gonna be using chip brushes. So you don't need to have fancy brushes for all the work. I mean, you know, if you want a nice smooth surface of, as you're painting dressers and things, a good brush makes, makes a big difference. But when we're painting something like this that we're gonna be layering on all kinds of paint, um, we're gonna be distressing, we're gonna be spritzing water at it, you don't need a good brush. So, I want to be able to get into all the nooks and crannies. Chip brush will be fine. To do this, I'm actually going to start off very bold looking because this is my under layer. I want to get um, some dark colors on this that I'm going to be able to distress back to. And it's going to look very patchy. I'm just warning you now. So I am gonna be using, and I'm using all DIY paint, which is what I sell here in the store, queenbeecreationshome.com. Um, I carry the DIY clay-based paint, and I also carry Sweet Pickens milk paint. But we're doing the Bohemian Blue, my favorite. I love this color. It's actually like a really deep teal and uh, not a navy, so it's got like green undertones to it. And I'm going to be using a little bit of fancy farm girl. So kind of like a really deep, um, luscious kind of uh, lichen green color. And chip brush for each and a chip brush for blending. And all I'm going to do is start kind of dabbing this on in different places. So I'm kind of doing the green in places where maybe some lichen and moss may kind of settle, right? So maybe on some of the highs and definitely along the edging of this and just kind of getting that on. And I'm just gonna do roughly a little bit here so you can see where I'm, see where I'm going with this. And taking my second brush, I'm gonna be filling in some of those other areas with my Bohemian Blue. So I'm gonna get all of it covered, but this is why I wanted the chip brush. You can see how much I'm really kind of using those bristles to be able to get down into all of those details. And quite honestly, I don't wanna ruin a good brush by doing that. So, just kind of doing some patching and then I have a third brush so you can see here where these colors kind of meet I'm just going to kind of blend them and because that bohemian blue has kind of that green undertone to it it just kind of all merges in together and looks really cool I love this this kind of combination of them so all I'm doing is I'm gonna work on one side, one side at a time, sort of using the top squared off piece as a bit of a, of a base to, to kind of trial this. But I'm just going to continue all the way down, kind of patching and mixing these colors together. See, on the angle there, they look awesome together but we're going to get those two colors working and get this all covered. And then I'll come back at you when we move on to the next thing. This is so much fun. Thank you. 
this is both of these um, columns dry. Now, DIY paint always dries lighter. So once these would be sealed, this would go darker. So the idea, we're going to be layering on colors and we're going to be doing multiple layers. In which case, I have Skeleton Key by DIY and I have added twice as much water as paint, possibly three times. We want these wet layers and really what I'm looking at doing is just taking my brush and so for this I'm using um, a chalk paint brush so that it holds a lot of the water and I am just kind of pushing it into the details. I'm making a mess so you can see I put a drop cloth down on my table which I didn't have before and I am just taking these light thin layers and I am just pushing my brush on here and I am letting it drip right so these overhangs because it can't run anywhere I'm just holding my container underneath it but here I'm just gonna let it run so I can take it sideways and let them run the drips I'm just looking at getting a light layer of paint on here if you want it to be a little bit more opaque you could add a little bit less water I'm just looking at getting these thin layers on this now because I'm going to be adding another coat of this. I'm going to do two or three coats of this and then I'm going to flip over to um, lighter colors afterward. But here I'm just looking at getting a little bit. It's going to start to sink into all of the crevices. You can start to see a little bit where it's kind of sitting over top of this, but I need it to start sticking and just kind of start sitting in the details. So I'm gonna do this to both of them, all the way around, and uh, let it dry. And <laughs> then I'll come back at you, see what we've got, and see what we do next. But we're gonna be doing a lot of this kind of layering through this whole thing so that we start building up some of the color, get some of the darker tones echoing through before we even get anywhere near um, contemplating any kind of distressing. So make sure you've got good drop cloths down, um, multiple layers. This is like four layers thick so that it's pretty absorbent and it's just a plastic table underneath. So we're good to go. But um, just doing this all the way around, continuing on. Okay, you can see that that gray drip already started to kind of lightly soften the colors, start to uh, kind of, I guess kind of meld them together a little bit. So we're gonna carry on. Now, I still have a, a little bit of it here in the container. And what I did do was I did the one coat that you saw me applying, and then I just applied a second coat around the top. So just squishing it into some of the areas that it didn't have. I'm just going to continue to use this. I'm going to add my next color into it. It's going to start to lighten it up, but you know, we're just working through. So I have some crinoline from DIY and I'm going to add a mess of that in there. Well, you know what I'm going to do? There's not that much left. So I'm going to pour some water in there, clean out the jar. And add that to there and that can be a big part of my water there's a tinge in there so mixing this up you can see that I've got mostly a cream looking it's got that slight gray cast to it which is fine and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing so I'm just going to be putting this on, letting it drip and run. I'm just putting that next coat on. So you can see I'm not doing it evenly. I'm letting it kind of go wherever and paintbrush. <laughs> and I'm just going to let it do the same kind of dripping thing that I did with the last coat. 
And across here, if I want, I can mist it a little bit to get it to kind of spread out, get a little bit more of, of a coating happening across here. And I'm gonna let it drip and run across the rest of it. So again, just starting to soften and even out the colors. And I'm just gonna go around both of them again with this color. So slowly working my way lighter as we go. I'm loving how this looks so far, guys. So there you go. I'm just gonna carry on doing the same thing around all of the corners. And you can see how it starts to, that little bit of a mister um, at this level. It didn't bother sooner than this to do the mister, um, but now as I'm starting to get, get into probably my next to final coat, maybe my final, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of evening it out a little bit, but not totally. <laughs> All right, carrying on. All right, this is how they're looking after our addition of the crinoline, the kind of the cream color. Now again, I still have some in here, but I'm going to whiten it up a little bit. I'm adding some white, um, white swan. So it's not going to be a bright white as if I did white swan just on its own because I had still a bunch of the crinoline in there, but it is making it lighter colored. So again, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. Now, I like the kind of the variegated kind of drippy look. At this stage, you could opt to take a wet sponge and kind of dab the color on or use the wet drippy look and then dab in the areas where you'd like to soften the drip look, your choice. I'm waiting to see how it looks. I am using, oh, I need to refill this. That just reminded me, thank you. Um, I'm using my mister and helping, helping some of the paint to kind of spread out so you can see where it kind of gets it to bleed out a little bit to the sides. And certainly as well, I'm using the mister on the top to kind of soften it. Ooh, that was wet. Um, but, we're just doing the same again, where I'm just adding this, dabbing it on, right? I'm not working to necessarily push it down into all of the lows because I want it to kind of be the, the darker, kind of greeny blue colors that are down in there. And I'm just letting this Kind of flow all across, taking my mister. Oh, missed a little spot up here that didn't really get much of anything new in there. And then misting it. And here I'm gonna mist a fair bit on this piece because I don't want it to be heavy. I want it to be a little bit more translucent at this coat. That spritzing just kind of helps it just kind of flow right across. I love this. Okay, this is this is the fun part, the mystery part. But it's gonna keep flowing and, and kind of doing its thing as it goes and as it continues to kind of dry. I love how this has got like the darker color sitting up in here and then it's a little bit whiter here and then goes down again into a little bit more of that lycany shade. I mean, I love this look. Again, at this point, take a wet um, sponge, like a sea sponge or a cut up part of, um, oh, a car wash sponge. But again, I would tear it so you've got uneven, jaggedy areas. You don't wanna have just a flat sponge, but you could sponge at this point just to be able to soften out a little bit of this, but I'm gonna do some distressing afterward and bring back a little bit more of the green so I kinda like how this is going. But I'm gonna carry on, do this 
on all the other sides, a little bit more on the top, and um, let it dry overnight so that all of the layers are dry uh, before I would begin any kind of distressing. So this is how it's going to look. Oh, I'm loving these. I'm loving these. <laughs> okay, I'm carrying on. We are now at the sanding step. So all of our washes are on and you can see that we've gone back to a lot of white, but you can see that those darker colors, the green and the blue poking through still because they're down in the lows. Um, we want to sand back a little bit more of that color and bear in mind that as soon as we put a sealer on this, um, those darker colors are going to pop more right? And they're going to echo even through where the white and the light grays are because they're just washes, they're thin coats. So even when we're sanding, I don't want to take a really heavy grit sandpaper to this because they're such thin layers. So I'm using 320 grit sandpaper and possibly like a really worn, gee, it has no grit, feels pretty smooth sanding block left. So I'm just going to be hitting some of those highs bring a little bit of the detail back into this so you know here we're starting to see a little bit of that color and again around some of those details and bring it back in just across some of the highs so i'm not doing tons of sanding to be able to do this because it's going to pop it's going to pop a lot more once i get a little bit of sealer onto it. So I'm just adding a little bit more detail here and there where I don't have it. And then our next step, we're going to seal it. And then we're potentially adding a little bit more age and depth to it, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. So just do a bit of the sanding and then do a good white back because we're gonna seal next. We wanna make sure that we've got all of that dust gone um, so that we're not sealing all those rough particles back in. these babies sanded down I've got them wiped down and now the exciting part because this is where we start to see some of that color come back um, and then I can start making some decisions about about what else I want to do to them but they've got a lot of cool texture which is harder for you to see you can see up here that it's kind of worn there's some divots that existed in them already and that's kind of what I'm going for. I want them to still look aged. I don't want them to look brand new and pristine. To seal them, if you were doing this for yourself and you knew that you were gonna be using them inside, then you could use um, a clear wax. So if I knew that that's what I was doing with them, if I was keeping them for myself and I was gonna use them inside, I would probably use a wax and then go in with some dark wax and all that kind of stuff. You could, if you hate wax, and some people just don't like it. Um, I don't know why, I don't know who you are. I love it, but some people don't. You could use any kind of top coat of your choice, right? So you could use the Big Top from DIY, you could use uh, some from the Sweet Pickens line that I have, you could use any kind of a polyacrylic from whatever paint company that you love, okay? Not gonna tell you different. However, I am going to be selling these in a shop and they could be used outdoors. Somebody could put a big planter on and have all of their, their uh, greenery spilling down, could be going on a front porch. I don't know. So I want to give them the option. If I seal it with an outdoor sealer, it could be used indoors, but it would be good for outdoors as well. So I am using one that I just get from Home Depot. 
Okay, so this is, let me get you the English side. <laughs> it is Verifane, Verifane. It is water-based. It is for outdoor use and it is satin because I don't like these things to be super glossy. Even satin is a little bit shinier than I usually like, even though it's not shiny. So all that we're gonna do, and I'm taking a chip brush for this because I have to get it down into all of those little nooks and crannies. And I am just going to start to apply this on. And if you're worried about cross-contamination, um, then don't dip again. Pour this off into another little cup, but I use my stuff so fast, it doesn't have a chance to build up any kind of, well, really in my head, the word is grossities, but. <laughs> You know what I'm saying, any weird stuff or, or creating mold. But if you go back in after a while to your product and it's got some mold in it, it's because you were double dipping. So just, just like chips and dip. <laughs> there are little germs that you're adding to it and it can just uh, create some growths on your paint or your other products. But again, it has to have time to be able to do that and because this is the season for a lot of outdoor stuff. It's not gonna have time. But you can already see, I'm looking in the monitor, and you can already see this starting to come to life. You're starting to see some of those darker details popping. And I like the contrast of the blue and then the green. It's kind of like, like lichen, but it, it's deepened in tone, and so it gives a little bit more of the variation. And in which case, if you're wondering on the why, some of the close-ups that I'll give you, you'll be able to see um, it was well worth doing. Oh my gosh, am I loving this? Is that bad to say when you did it? Not really, because it's still a surprising finish. I'm loving this. If you see me going back over spots, it's just to smooth it out that sometimes um, this starts to settle in some of those lows and I'm just kind of, um, going over it so that I don't have a blob. So let me just show you on the stand how it just deepens that color. It brings it out. You get, you get those darker tones echoing up through those washes because they weren't a solid color. Now, if you want them to be a solid color and only have color where you distress back, then don't do the wash. Right, put the color on, paint it in your solid um, light gray or white or cream, whatever color you want. But I, I like that color echoing up so you don't end up with that pure white or pure cream. And um, oh my gosh, yes, loving that. Okay, I'm gonna carry on with this. I'll pull you in for a little bit of a close up and uh, maybe you can see better some of the tones that I'm loving, but goodness, that's nice. <laughs> I love it when things work. Just pulling you in right now so you could see some of, some of what was exciting me so much in these, in these colors that you can see those the greens and the blue. And what's lovely is it had a little bit of um, that gold with the cream already and so some areas where I distressed a little bit of the gold is just peeking through here and there which is lovely it's just adding a whole other dimension to it so um yeah we'll see once I get this all dry um whether I'm adding a little bit of dark here and there just for added dimension or I'm just calling it quits and leaving it alone, but loving this so far. I have you in close for this. I gave you a couple of pics of kind of the close up of this, but I've decided that I quite like the little bits of gold that are showing. So what I am doing is I am taking Rub and Buff in gold leaf. It comes in all kinds of colors. I'll put a link in for um, purchasing it on Amazon if you want. My local hard store does not carry it. 
and I just put a little bit on my finger and I'm just going to touch it here and there. I'm not looking at wanting to have a huge amount of it. I just want to kind of accentuate a little bit of the natural gold that's peeking through where it already was and just touching it up a little bit on the highs. It's not adding a huge visual difference from afar, but it really does kind of make some of these little details um, pop and just accentuate them a little bit. And it's got a natural built-in sealer, so I'm not gonna have to seal over the product again, as I might with something else. But it's just gonna add a little bit more uh, distinction. It's gonna highlight the details just a little bit more for me. And um, I'm kind of kind of digging the look. Now, what I'm not doing is like down here, I'm not doing all of these lines, just here and there. I may be doing a little bit around the top, a little bit around the bottom, and just here and there-ish. So I'm not looking, I think you can start to see some of the detail here. I'm not looking at doing it in any kind of regimented or formal way. You can see in Arizona, I just wipe my finger off on the drop cloth. Um, but I think you can see that it's very, you know, not organic necessarily because I'm going for the highs, but it's not um, this perfect kind of regimented, everything has the same amount kind of look to it. And it just kind of deepens some of the look of it. So I'm going to carry on with that. Um, the base really doesn't get much, just a little touch here and there. Mostly it's up here. And then we're done. I'll get a nice clear picture of these for you, but these babies are done and I love them. They looked really old and tired. Now they look kind of old, new, refreshed. They're just awesome. I love these. So, you know, more than anything else, I hope this gives you an idea of one, how to refresh things, maybe how to be able to use washes as layers of color, just faint kind of layers of color, kind of building up a finish over top of some stronger color. So those, those layered pale colors over top give you um, a great effect if you're, if you're softly standing back to them, you get that translucency that lets a lot of the color echo up through it. And I know I talk about echoing colors up through things. I hope that this gives you an idea of what I'm talking about. And it's something that you just can't achieve by just painting um, a solid opaque color over another color and just distressing. It, it gives you a look that is definitely different than that. It gives that aged kind of a patinaed look of, of people that have painted over and then that paint has worn down and people wear paint again and that paint gets worn down and you get all of those echoing layers coming up through it and it's beautiful finish. I love that. This is a way to be able to replicate that without having to wait all of the decades of wear and tear. Hopefully that you enjoyed this, that you take something away that you can maybe apply to your project, whether on furniture or on something smaller. It's a great technique to be able to use. It's a lot of fun. I hope you give it a try. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you do. And as always, until next time, take care.